The luxury brand MS has been passed on to generations since it was founded in 1837. On the one hand, it has followed the laborious work of the artisans in his workshop, and on the other hand, it has followed the lifestyles of its clients. MS keeps a high level of sensitivity and attention to how society and its needs are always changing. This is made possible by a strong spirit of freedom and creativity. But before MS came to be what it is today, it all started with a boy who lost everything he had and slowly built himself from the ground up. Welcome to Lux Live. And when it comes to luxury and lifestyle, we've got you covered. Today, we're going to talk about the story of the young man who founded the Hermes brand. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Feel free to click that notification bell to receive updates and be the first to check out our latest videos. Now, let's begin. On January 10, 1801, Thierry Ames was born in Kreppel, a town near Dusseldorf. His mother was from Germany and his father was from France. They were both innkeepers and had six children, and Thierry was the youngest. The Napoleonic Wars broke out two years after he was born, and several of his family members died in the war. As if that wasn't bad enough, his other relatives died of diseases. In 1928, in the wake of these terrible losses, the Hermes family uprooted their lives and relocated from Krakow to Paris. They lived in the north of Paris, and that's where Thierry, who was 27 at the time, learned how to work with leather for the first time. Three years after relocating the family, Thierry and his wife were finally blessed with the birth of their first child, a son named Charles Emile. The boy would soon become the heir to a business empire, but it won't happen yet because there is still no empire established. Even though Thierry didn't have an easy childhood, he grew up with a strong drive to succeed. The business empire's humble beginning started in 1837 in Paris, when Thierry built a workshop. This event marked the beginning of the brand's journey to greatness. In the beginning, he recognized and anticipated the demands of his consumers, specifically their desire for ease and lightness in the midst of a city that was bustling with modern activity. This is a technological achievement that was acknowledged with a prize at the Universal Exhibition in 1867 because its harnesses embodied both a distinct delicacy and an endurance under all conditions. Thierry worked hard for many years to make harnesses, but he died at the age of 77 in 1878. After Thierry's death, the workshops were relocated and Charles Emile Amez, his son, built a store as well. At this now iconic location, harnesses and saddles were custom made to the customer's specifications. A mass seller reputation began to quickly garner praise from people all around the world in a relatively short amount of time. Charles Emile brought the company to new heights while he was in charge, and his legacy lives on. The house quickly earned a name for itself across Europe thanks to the superior quality of its works of art. However, after over three decades in the role, Charles Emile believed that it was time to hand over the reins to his sons, Adolf and Emile Morris. They changed the name of the business to Hermes Freres, and together they worked to increase its prominence on the international scene. Emile Maurice had the opportunity to travel to Canada, where he was shown an intriguing new gadget known as the Zipper. He took it back to France and filed for a patent on the idea when he realized that this clever little device could be sold in a big way. He was the first person in France to do so, and by the late 1910s, the brand had produced the first pieces of apparel and handbags to include the zipper into their construction. Emile Maurice's sons-in-law, Robert Dumas, Jean-René Garon, and Francis Pouch joined him after the zipper's success, each bringing their own talent and vision for the company. By 1914, MS was providing the Tsar of Russia with saddles, and the business employed up to 80 saddle makers. The company's sales of horse harnesses and equipment began to fall in 1919 when Adolf opted to depart with his brother Emil purchasing the company. Then, in 1922, leather handbags were made for the first time. After Emil's wife said she couldn't find one she liked, in 1925, they grew even more and made the first ready-to-wear pieces of clothing for men. In 1927, the brand started making jewelry. In 1928, it made watches and sandals. 
After 10 years, they came up with a silk scarf, which celebrities loved right away. Every product was a huge success, and it seemed like the brand couldn't be stopped. But then, Emil Maurice died, leaving his sons-in-law in charge. But Robert Dumas was the one who took over as head of the company in 1951. Robert was the first person who didn't come from the family to run the business. So he knew he had a lot to prove. But soon enough, it became clear that he was the best person for the job. He made the horse and carriage logo, which is still used today. He was also behind many of the house's most iconic products, like the chandelier bracelet and the well-known Kelly bag. MS rose to even greater heights because of this bag. The brand was in demand by the world's elite and was brought into the public eye. During the 1960s and 1970s, MS continued to do well in business, but then it started to lose money because most high-end fashions started using more synthetic materials like nylon, polyester, and vinyl. MS insisted that only the best natural materials be used, but these new ones were a lot more expensive, which hurt their business a lot. Beginning in 1978, John Louis DeMoss assumed control of the company. His family had a long history of creativity and ambition, so it was no surprise that John Louis showed the world how great their brand was and gradually introduced new ideas into the house of MS. He expanded the company's product offerings and gave it a simpler name, MS. John Louis hoped that the brand would one day return to the level of popularity it formerly enjoyed, and in 1984, the chance to do so presented itself. It was when John Louis and the English actress and singer Jane Birkin were traveling from Paris to London on the same airplane. That fateful flight and encounter with the actress gave birth to what it is now known as the Birkin bag. In 2005, John Louis made the announcement that he was going to retire. He then selected his close friend Patrick Thomas to the position of CEO, and he appointed his son Pierre Alexis de Moss to the position of Artistic Director. Before the 2013 appointment of Axel de Moss, who was John Louis de Moss' nephew, Patrick Thomas made sure that the transition between the two generations went off without a hitch. The company has experienced the most successful period of expansion in the past several decades, thanks to the leadership of Pierre Alexis and Axel. MS is now widely considered to be one of the most desirable luxury brands worldwide. The fashion house is rich in history and tradition, and its past is unlike that of most other high-end designer brands. It has been handed down from one generation to the next, and the entirety of its existence has been spent to the control of the same family, all because a young man who lost everything aspired for a better life and greatness. If you enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, click subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive updates in our latest videos. Also, feel free to leave us a comment. If you want to watch more videos, head on over to our channel to see more from Lux Live. See you!